Hey everyone, in today's video, we've got the cutest little Morant you ever did see. This is the Morantz Model 2015. It uses the same chassis as a Morantz 1070 amplifier, or 1040, if you're familiar with those. It's very small, I've never seen one of these in person before, and I'm thrilled to have it on the bench today. It's here because I'm told it's not working right. The only thing I know so far is, if you look right here, I'll spin this, the meter's not moving, and that's because the string inside is broken. So that's one thing I'll need to fix. I haven't turned this on yet, I haven't listened to it, but when I do, I'll assess what needs to happen, and I'm going to make this thing work the best I can without restoring it. So let's get going. So as you can see, this thing is in really nice cosmetic condition. And like I said, I haven't turned it on, but, you know, from what I can tell, this has been in a pretty good environment most of its life. I expect that it won't be too bad, there will probably be some dirty controls, but uh, I think this one's going to be pretty simple to fix with the exception of the uh, tuner string, which is going to be a little bit difficult. I just happen to have my 2270 in the room. Just look at the size difference between these two. You know, the 2270 isn't, like, massive by any means, but the 2015, it's so small. Look at that. Doesn't go back too far either. So, really nice little compact unit here, which for me makes it really nice to work on because, you know, it's lightweight. You know, I've worked on a Marantz 2385 before and I really didn't like it because I couldn't even manipulate the dang thing because it was so heavy. The 2270 is kind of like that, but not nearly to that level. And take a look at the back of this thing. There's not too much going on here, but you've got everything you need. You've got your antenna hookups, you've got phono, aux, you've got tape 1 in and out, tape 2 in and out, and connections for uh, two sets of speakers. And uh, your switched and unswitched AC outlets are always a nice touch there. Let's get this thing fired up and see how it sounds. So I'm taking you out with me. This is my first time turning it on, so let's go. Volume down. Do it like that. Alright, we have quite a few burnt out uh, bulbs here, so that'll be something that can be replaced. Uh, let's try turning on the uh, speakers. No sound, that's good, the volume's down. Let's switch it to uh, FM. Yeah, we see in FM that the uh, dial pointer light is burnt out, and uh, if we turn up the volume, Sounds like there is static, but it's uh, it's pretty bad. Uh, we'll definitely need to consider cleaning some switches, and uh, as soon as the tuner string is uh, back on track, like I showed you, nothing happens. It's been really nice though. So uh, then we'll be able to change stations once that is fixed. Uh, let me hook up my phone and we'll see if we get any sound out of aux okay got the music playing oh boy that is well now it sounds good but uh... Whoa. Oh. oh it's so bad oh my gosh Yeah, those are some of the dirtiest pots I've ever come across. It's working though. Yeah, I just lost, uh... oh no, it's back, but yeah. Dirty tape monitor is a classic for uh, causing no sound issues. Okay, well, it appears the receiver is working, but uh, those controls are really, really dirty. All right, here's the plan of attack. We're gonna take the cover off. We're gonna take the faceplate off. And that's going to allow me to have easy access to the uh, light bulbs and the controls. 
I'm going to cocoon. I'm going to clean the controls. I'm going to replace the burnt out lights with new ones and I'll restring that uh, tuner dial pointer. All right, let's get started. All right, it's been a minute since I've used the uh, the GoPro. So I've got this over here just so I can see that uh, I'm actually recording what I intend to record if you ever interested. All right, let's make life easy. Let's disconnect these guys. Take our GIS screwdriver. Okay, what do we got? So what we have here is indeed a, uh, a broken tuner string. Very broken tuner string. You're not gonna be changing your stations with that. That's for dang sure. This receiver it looks like it uses a metal housing for the lights, which is great. That means there'll be no melted plastic in there. Overall, though, I'm really impressed with how clean this receiver is on the inside. Um, just looking around, I don't see any... Uh, there's a little clip for the tuner. I don't see any bulging caps or anything so far. This is a uh, capacitor coupled receiver because we see we have one filter capacitor instead of two. And then we got these two big cans right here on the circuit board that goes to the power amplifier because we see these wires going to the outputs on here. That means it's capacitor coupled. We don't have a, there's no need for a relay here because these are protecting your speakers from the DC. Oh, and over here, we've got the other piece we'll need for the tuner. Yeah, this will be going over um, this little hook here when I'm all done. That's how this used to be before it broke. So I'm going to keep that around. Um, I'm going to need to look up the service manual to see what the proper uh, winding is for the tuner string. That won't be too bad. And I'm also going to need to be very careful not to break this, as usual. This needs to come off. Let's take off the bottom cover and see what kind of access we're going to have to the, uh, the controls for cleaning. Because normally on these Marantz receivers, you can get to the controls by removing the bottom cover pretty easily. Okay, did I get it? I sure did. Okay, so looking in here, I'll have access to the power switch. Oh yeah, I've got pretty good access to both speaker controls right there. Great access to the selector, that's going to need a lot of cleaning. And uh, great access to these uh, function buttons here. You can see them right through there, so that's going to be really great. Okay, let's get this faceplate off. That's going to be four screws, four knobs, this bounce slider, and it should slide right off. So let's see if I'm right about that. Does this one fit? That's pretty good. What about this one? Which one fits better? I'm checking to see which screwdriver fits the best, and it's this one. So. Because like we can see, if you look closely at this screw, I don't know if I'll be able to get it on the camera, but somebody's been here, it's slightly stripped, I don't want to make that any worse. So we'll start here, make sure, okay, very good, very easy to get that off. Oops. You want to be very careful with your screwdriver with this and not scratch the faceplate like I almost just did but I didn't okay comes right off almost yep we'll have to re-glue these that's for sure that's that's the thing that's happening on both the volume knob and the uh, selector switch also and there it is get this off while thinking about it and then we'll take this off. Okay, came right off. We'll arrange these over here in the order in which we've removed them. 
and this should slide right off. Beautiful. The nice thing about this is uh, the tuner string is already broken, so I can't break it any further, so we just kind of get that out of the way. Looks like this is held in entirely with glue. Pull this down like so. Stick my finger under there. It's nice if we can get the vellum out in one piece. And yep, so we just kind of worked that out nicely. This is coming off. Oh, I'm starting to split layers here on the vellum. So, let me uh, pull carefully here. Yeah, it's coming right off. I've seen much worse vellum on these. This really isn't. This ain't that bad. It definitely needs to be replaced, but I've seen far worse. As we see, the Marantz 2015 uses four fuse lamps for the dial. There will be one behind this meter, I'm sure of it. We've got one stereo indicator, and then we've got a light bulb inside of the pointer. So, that is your bill of material for a relamp job on this receiver if you're, if you're doing that. Anyways, let's get these out. I'm going to have to order new lamps from dgwojo.com, so there will be another day in which I finish this video, but for today, we'll get these out so they're ready for new lamps when they come. Let's go over here. Let's get this thing unraveled. And then here we have this. I'll take a razor blade. I'll slice that tape thing. this a bunch of old tape from the 70s there's the cap okay this thing is officially free I'm gonna put this up here so I don't break it do not break your pointer ever You'll never find a new one because everybody breaks them and they don't make them anymore. Shout out to Sam Repair DIY on his uh, 2015 relamp video because it gave me some guidance here. Um, looks like this plate here that all the lights are on, that is going to slide back but we need to loosen these circuit boards here in order to get some wiggle room in there. So that's what I'm going to do. I will loosen up the, uh, or I'll remove the screws on the uh, power supply and power amplifier boards. And for some stupid reason, Marantz did not use magnetic screws here. It's the first time I've seen that. That's quite annoying, but hey, it's okay. There's also a ground screw right here. It's magnetic, thank goodness. We will not want to lose that little uh, washer there. That helps make good conductivity. Okay, so now we've got some wiggle room, literally, because we can wiggle the boards. And then this assembly here that the fuse lamps go into is held in by two screws. You have one right here. There's one here too. Look at that. I've actually created an opening to where I can get my finger in there and then get the bulb out. Let's see. I'll remove it this way. Pull out of that spring. And then I can pull it. Yeah. There you go. That worked. Okay, so at this point I've removed all of the uh, fuse lamps. I've removed the tuner pointer and the string. I'll need to replace this bulb when I get bulbs in. Same with the stereo indicator. That's going to be very easy. Two solder joints right back there. 
I think what I'll do now is I will work on using some deoxit to clean the switches and then I will attempt to restring the uh, the tuner pointer here. So with deoxit, always put safety glasses on so you can not get deoxid in your face. Don't want that. And uh, all right, let's get to work. Okay, we've got it flipped over. I see these are the speaker switches right here. We can already see hear that. The remote switch is uh, already sticking, so we'll definitely want to get plenty of deoxid on that. Well, that's funny, just made it worse. Maybe it'll get better. Okay, there it goes. Much better. This is the volume knob, so this one was extremely, extremely dirty. So I we'll want to make sure we get plenty of deoxid in there at all angles. They include the loudness, tape monitor, FM muting, and uh, mono. I believe it's always nice to have a, uh, a knob to use on the selector switch because it's a little bit more difficult to move around so and to do this truly properly you would want to uh, remove these nuts here and get this board exposed, but I see the openings on the pots from here, so that's all I'm gonna do. And I've got some F100 that I'm using in uh, the balance slider because I believe there's a plastic on metal contact in the slider, and that's uh, deoxid's not Deoxid D5 is not good for that. The uh, deoxid fader is. So that feels nice and smooth. Very nice. This might be good and clean now. Alright, so here I have the service manual for the Marantz 2015. Got this on hifienginecom Anybody can get an account on Hi-Fi Engine, they just want a username and a password, and I think that's about it. I'm actually going to hold off on this until I get my lights from Dave later in the week, because I don't want this to happen after I've just spent an hour trying to restring this thing. So, tune in to the next edit for uh, when I actually do this. Alright, we're back. Got the lights from Dave. What's great about Dave is he always marks the model and he gives you, uh, you know, the kind of bulbs you asked for. Uh, he gave me an extra because, you know, I'm plugging him right here. And uh, he also provides uh, solder and heat shrink for uh, the repairs too. So that's really cool. I already have a lot of solder and heat shrink on hand, but it's still cool that he that he uh, provides it because. Some people might not have very much on it. Let's work on getting these fuse lamps installed. So this is pretty easy. You've seen me take these out before. All you're gonna do with these new ones is you just put them in one by one, just like this. Then go right in. What's going to be tricky here is getting this last one here behind that uh, tuner meter. So what I'm going to, so what I've done, you recall, I removed this board and uh, got it kind of loose. What that allows me to do is kind of shift this board to the side a little bit. Now what I think I can do is I can go in with the one end here of this bulb. Sorry if you can't see. Basically, I'm going to try to get the one end in first, that's furthest away from me, and then I'll be able to push it in on this uh, 
on this inside one here. Get the other one. Okay, so I, I got the inside one in. Now I'll just... Yeah, I just took my pinky in there. I kind of pushed until it uh, made contact with the, uh, the outside clip there. So that's good. I left this fourth one here open just in case I needed the room. Okay, fuse lamps have been replaced. Now I get to put it back here and try to remember how I took this all apart because it's uh, it's been a minute. Right, one of the reasons I did not uh, restring the tuner while I was waiting for the lights to come in is because uh, you gotta get a soldering iron right there. You really don't want your uh, string there when you do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Heiko FR300 and all I'm going to do is just desolder those two pins right there. And if you want one of these, I've got a video in the description where I talk about the tools I like to use. It's got links to my Amazon Associates. If you use those links, I'll get a small cut. What I'm going to do is I'll just take my needle of those pliers here. And we'll carefully grab the bulb. And there it is. Now it's time for our new bulb right here. I will carefully guide that in. I'll add a very small amount of solder to the one joint. Bend it to where you need it. My pinky is small enough so I can do this. I'm going to melt that again. I'm going to push. And what that's doing is it's allowing me to bottom the bulb out on the uh, circuit board. And uh, be nice and uh, straight with the uh, the exit. So, and now what I'll do is I'll solder the other joint fully and properly, and then I'll do that first joint fully and properly. Looks okay to me. Now it's time to get the uh, dial pointer bulb replaced. So what I need to do is desolder at uh, those two places. Then once I do that I'll be able to pull this off. I can cut this new one to length, run some uh, wire through those, hopefully the ring terminals in there, or just wrap them or whatever. And then uh, that'll be the way you do that. Okay, so looks like we've got the one free. Sorry if you can't see. but. This is how this is working right now. Okay, now we got the other one free. What I'll do next is I'll take a look at this thing here. We're going to put these next to each other and see how much wire do I need. I'm going to do like maybe two inches more than I actually need because you can't really get material back once you uh, have it. Okay, look at that. Pretty good, not too bad. I will strip these guys. I'll take this and twist it like so because you know, that's how it looks on the uh, the original one. We want these wires kind of tied together so they stay together. See what I'm doing? I'm just making it all twisty along there. And since this is an incandescent bulb running off of, well, doesn't even matter if it's AC or DC. It does not matter which wire we put where here. So. I will start with uh, the one down here. I'm gonna, and this is another tool I've got on that uh, tools video. These are just little tiny screwdrivers. They are so handy for stuff like this. See, I'm just trying to run this through that little uh, ring terminal there. See, I've got the wire in there. I need to wrap that around somehow. So, can't do that with my fingers, but I can do it with this little tiny screwdriver. I will go ahead and solder that immediately because um, I don't want this to come loose when I'm wrapping that one there. So we'll heat up that terminal. And we'll just get this on there. And then, same deal up here. Take my screwdriver and we'll just wrap around that solder. What you should do at the end after you solder something like this is just kind of take the wire move it around. If you see any of the uh, strands of conductor moving around in there, add more solder and make that stop happening. I think now is a good time to reassemble um, 
all this stuff, get all the screws put back in, and uh, then we can start working on this here. Pro tip with putting screws back in a PCB, do not tighten them until all four screws have been threaded into the standoffs because if you tighten one, chances are the other three will not be lined up and you'll, if you don't know why that is, you'll be wondering why the heck is this happening? And you might be a little rougher with it than you wish you would have been. And uh, well, it's because you, you tightened your screws too soon. You should have waited until they are all in. Okay, they are all in. Now I will tighten this. Okay, what else do we have? Looks like we have these two here to hold in the, uh, the fuse lamp assembly. Okay. It looks like this thing is more or less reassembled. Um, so what I'll do is since I was playing around with all the boards in here and you know plenty of other things, I don't know if I uh, screwed something up just yet. So I'm going to put this on my custom-made dim bulb tester here and uh, make sure that uh, there are no shorts in the receiver. So basically, what that means is I put the receiver in series with this lamp here. So I turn the receiver on. I'll turn the dim bulb tester on. And there are no shorts. Perfect. So, as we can see, all four fuse lamps are working. It's kind of an unfortunate design they used for this. The uh, This lamp, or this meter, is just not illuminated. It's just, it's just cheap design. It's not centered. And that's also in combination with... Uh, uh, you can't see in the video, but maybe if I turn down the exposure all the way you can kind of see that the uh, the filament lengths on these bulbs they do not stretch out the entire width of the uh, the glass case there and that's because these new bulbs they use a cheaper process or something and uh, they just terminate the the filament part somewhere like kind of inside whereas the original bulbs the original Marantz bulbs they used for these fuse lamps they get terminated like right where the metal end starts, so they they illuminate the receiver better. And uh, that's a massive pet peeve of mine. I really wish it wasn't like that, but unfortunately, it is. And uh, then it leads to stuff like that. And uh, I'll probably have to double down on the vellum paper here because, you know, to avoid hot spots, that's just what I'm going to have to do. Here's the original vellum back in. Let's see if it does a good job of uh, diffusing the light. Yeah, it does okay. I'll make sure this light is diffused uh, the best it can be when I put new vellum back in. And of course, there's one thing we still need to check here, and uh, that is the uh, Tudor pointer bulb. Is this working? Yes, it is. I just switched the stereo to FM, and this is working, so that's good. I think it's time to take on the tuner pointer spring. Alright, so I've got my ancient laptop and uh, I have it pulled up, or I have it uh, open to the Marantz 2015 service manual. This is what I'm going to be looking at as I work on this here. So, I've never recorded myself doing this, so we'll just kind of see how this goes. Okay. This time, I gave myself an extra foot, so we will definitely not run out of string. But, you know, crazier things have happened, so... Okay. Depending on how I decide to edit this, I just tried doing this. I didn't cut myself enough string. I was disappointed, and now this might actually be better because I can show this because I just did it, and it's been a long time since I've done this, so... Basically, how I'm going to tie this little hooky guy here is I'm just, you know, when you tie your shoes, that very first knot you do, 
Just going to do two of those very simple knots. There's probably a name for it, but I don't know. So there's the one. And then I'll just do the second one here. Very good. We'll pull these tight. Then we'll probably hit this with some super glue toward the end when we're done. Okay, so now one thing I realized I can do is I can take this guy, there's a little hole right here for a screw that uh, your uh, guard attaches to, you know, this guy here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook this thing in there for now. And that's going to give me some tension to work with so I can get this thing strung better. Okay, so can we see the computer? No, but like... Alright, I'm looking at the computer. You can download the service manual if you want to follow along. I'm not going to switch between those two. I see that after we've gone through this pulley, we now need to head through this pulley right here, this uh, slanted one. Um, and we're going to be above this also. So we're above this, we're on the slanty guy. And now we're going to come through. And the biggest thing we need to do while we're in here is we need to get this string hooked on to the spring that we see inside of there. So I'll zoom in on that. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be wrapping and getting it. So this little opening right here, see I can move the screw right through it. That's where the string is going to come through and it's going to hook on to this spring. So I'm going to have the cap in this position. I'm going to start my loops on the uh, away from the camera because I don't want any overlapping loops because of um, how the the string will rub against itself and uh, it'll maybe wear prematurely. But above all, it'll just make noise, and you don't want that. So, so I'm taking my screwdriver. I've grabbed the string, and now I'm just going to try. Okay, whatever. I'm just going to try to hook it on to the spring. That's a little easier, isn't it? Didn't need a screwdriver that way. Okay. You don't need the screwdriver. I was overthinking it. One. And two, I think. I think I did that right. We'll see. So now, we can take it back up here. Hopefully I didn't do an extra loop. And then we'll come right up here. And we're going to hook on to the pulley right here. And uh, really what needs to happen is uh, this just needs to come through the, uh, the chassis here. So I just got it. And now what we're going to work on is our three turns on the uh, gyro touch tuning wheel. So we'll do turn number one, we'll do turn number two, and finally turn number three. Okay, so there's the three turns. Let's head up to the finish line now. So that one's pulled through. We hook onto this pulley here, and there it is. If I uh, move this, you see that it's all moving, which is exactly what we're looking for. I did this wrong, so that's unfortunate. We've got the wrong um, rotation clipped onto the spring here. That's why that's happening the way it's happening. You see, it's supposed to keep going around, but then it gets caught right there, so that's annoying, but not the end of the world. Um, it looks like what needs to happen is we need to get um, this, uh, you can't see from your point of view, but the second pass here of this wire is, uh, is what needs to be on the spring. So instead of restringing the whole thing, I'm going to attempt to get that on it right now. It looks like I might be successful, which is great. So finally, we, as you can see, we're able to complete a full rotation of the, uh, the tuning cap here. 
I'm just going to tie this knot. I think I'm going to tie it the same way I tied the other one. With just the very simple, uh, you know, first thing you do on your shoelace knot. Okay, it appears I've gotten this uh, just good enough. Um, we have some tension, or uh, we have some tension in this spring here, so that's pretty good. Um, and if we take a look, I'm able to move this the entire length of the uh, tuner cap, and it's very smooth and very nice. Wouldn't it suck if I accidentally cut this whole string and had to do this a third time? So basically now what I've done is I have set the uh, distance, wire distance here for this light. Um, basically just give it enough to where it uh, can complete this cycle without uh, running out of wire. So now I've got the cap here. We'll put it on top. And all we need now is some scotch tape. Very easy. Okay. Make a piece like this long or so. Okay. We're in. Wow, this is still off. Let's take the time to align this uh, this pointer here because wait a minute. Question to the viewers at home. Does anybody see a problem with the way this uh, thing is working right now because I do when I turn it this way the needle's supposed to move this way but it's moving the opposite way because uh, someone's not very smart tonight um, so uh, what needs to happen is this string needs to go down there and this string needs to go up here and uh, I can already tell, just based on the angles of these uh, pulleys here, that I did it wrong. Um, so, this has to come undone no matter what. I don't know if I'll be able to, but we'll see. Um, I think what I'll do is I will start by going like that. Uh, let's see. So this is supposed to come around like this. And hook on and then go back under. Come back through there. And then, uh, let's see. Pull that as hard as I can to get as much slack as I can. And then, uh, this is what's wrong. It just fell off the pulley. Okay. Huh. Well. Um, yeah. Don't you love it when you surprise yourself? Why is this so messed up, everyone? Why is this not working the way I think it should? Can anybody in the comments section tell me what I did wrong? Oh, wait. This isn't going to have a comments section until I get it right. Okay. I see what I did wrong. I see what I did wrong now. So I did two things wrong. First, I wrapped that around the wrong way, which, you know, we just corrected. What I did wrong was I wrapped this around the uh, gyro touch tuning thingy the wrong way. I wrapped it this way. I should have wrapped it this way. And that is why the direction is reversed. So. Now the question is, how do I get this right without uh, being terribly invasive here? I think what I can do is, first, this bracket comes off. So let's try that first here. Expose this right here. 
then maybe, just maybe, what I can do is take it off of there and redo it the other way. So I'm going to attempt that right now. I've got that done now. And then I can put this back on that pulley there. And now let's put this back. Tighten. Moment of truth. There it is. Okay. See? I've said it once, I'll say it again. I am not an expert. I am not a professional. This is my hobby. And uh, this is what happens when you're not a professional and this is your hobby and you make uh, silly little mistakes like this. So, uh, yeah, we've got this, uh, we've got this working again, finally. And we know for dang sure it's right because of, you know, everything we just checked over. Um, I did not need the comments section to tell me what the problem was, so proud of myself. Okay, now it's time to get the vellum paper replacement ready. What I've got here is some 48 pound or number 48 vellum paper. And I've got the original vellum paper here. I'm going to cut two pieces because, like I showed you with the lamps earlier, um, I think that having two pieces of vellum paper might be ideal for this receiver. And uh, given the filament. Uh, shortcomings so this doesn't need to be exact I'm just kind of freehanding it here with uh, the original piece and then I'll just do that a second time right here and one interesting thing about this receiver is there is no vellum paper behind this meter and then again looking at these papers like you know this is all yellow and nasty and gross this is clear, this is what it looked like when it was uh, new, so out of the way like so, rest it up there. Um, I'm going to turn this on here, just so I can take a look at the lights. Let's try one sheet of vellum and see what that looks like here. Let me see what that looks like this. Um, got a little bit of hot spot action. Not too much. And if I add the second sheet, what does that do? It basically takes away any of the hot spots. So I like I like the double sheets. And uh you know, this actually might look better or more in line with what this looks like with the double sheets if I have this one piece of paper just kind of chilling back there. Let's see. Yeah, that ain't bad. Pretty good actually. So what I did off camera is I decided to add a piece of vellum behind the uh, tuner pointer light. Uh, you cannot see it, but basically what I did is I made the piece big enough to where it kind of fits just right back in there. It's not going to be falling onto the bulb because this edge right here is kind of slanted. So it's basically locked in there. It's not really going to go anywhere. And, uh, well, I don't think it's going to catch fire because, well, why would they put this paper here if it would catch fire? these bulbs. That'd be stupid, so I think it's okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start gluing the vellum to this guy. I need to find glue to do that. Okay, I found glue. And uh, I'm going to try something different this time. We're going to use uh, the old paper as the uh, the gluing surface. Um, we'll put some glue right there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a Q-tip, this guy right here, 
I'm just going to dip it in there and I'm going to very carefully um, just kind of paint it um, to the, uh, the edges here. So we've got a uh, nice light layer of glue. It's not too much glue. Because uh, you don't want too much glue. A little goes a long way. Okay, that's a nice, fair, light amount of glue. Take our first sheet. We'll line it up with the corner. And we'll just kind of put it on there. kind of coming through there. And now we'll do the same thing again for the, uh, the second sheet. Just put a little bit of glue right where the old stuff went. Okay. That's some glue. Same thing. Line it up with the edge here. And plop it down. Uh, push a little bit, push outward so that you get the glue not bleeding in and come out. And since the paper likes to kind of warp a little bit when you do this, um, what I like to do is take a piece of scrap paper like this. We will kind of fold this around here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a heavy textbook and I'm going to put it in the textbook and uh, that will allow the glue to kind of, you know, get compressed and glue down nicely. I see an excellent candidate right here. Linear circuits. And uh, we'll come back in a minute. And we're back. Let's take a look and see what's inside of this book here. Oh look, it's that thing I put in the book. Who would have thought it would be in the book? Okay, that's uh, that's alright. I think we're gonna send it. The fun part is uh, you gotta glue this dang thing back in. And this is a place where Pioneer and others are superior to Marantz is that like, you know, why why can't there be some mechanical fastener that isn't glue? Right here, that is my question to the Marantz engineers that are probably no longer living, but you know, whatever. Um, so, I'll just put some glue again on the thing. And, uh, Push that on there. Pinching stay. This should be squeaky clean, so I'm gonna get some Windex and a microfiber. Just very clean from what I can tell. Let's put this guy on. The faceplate is honestly really clean, so I don't think I'm gonna bother too much. But I will take my same rag and uh, I will clean off the plastic so that. Uh, that window for the lights is nice and clean. And of course, dust likes to collect in there also. Always get both sides. The inside is the one that can only be cleaned right now. So now, what it's time to do is uh, hook up some speakers and uh, figure out where this thing is supposed to be. Now, unfortunately, the radio generally plays uh, copyrighted music, so I'm going to have to do that off camera, but basically there's a station here that's frequency 97.1, so I know it's going to be right about there. If I'm going to find the station, I'm going to, uh, you know, okay, let, let's say we found the station, All right, it's turned on, and uh, I'm happy with it, what I'm, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take super glue and uh, Put a little dab of glue right there and there to keep this in place. And then I'm also going to do a final gluing of these knots right here. I'll put some glue there and there. And that way, 
the knots will not come undone and uh, the tuner pointer will be where it needs to be. So if you excuse me, I'm going to get that taken care of here. Okay, the alignment went well. We see that we are at 97.1-ish. Uh, yeah, did the best I could. And uh, the radio is working. And uh, I'll demonstrate this in a little bit. You remember how scratchy this thing was when uh, we tested it first. It, uh, that's all gone now. The deoxid really did the trick there. So uh, let's get this thing fully reassembled and uh, see what it sounds like with uh, the same royalty free tunes I play in every single video. <laughs> Here, we'll just do some little tiny dabs in this area. I'm gonna get one right there. Back out of the way. Slide this over. Get a dab there. Get a dab there. That will stay put for uh, probably the remainder of this receiver's life. Uh, now, let's get this guy back in. We have our two screws. And we'll take them. Yeah, second hole here, so I'll tighten this one. If I take a look at uh, my piles of screws here, and my parts, I see that uh, all we have left is the uh, bottom cover screws and the top cover screws. So that means this thing is basically assembled. Um, now, like I like I promised, let's get the uh, let's get the phone hooked up to it so we can play some tunes and take a listen. Okay, it's playing. Sounds great. Set to flat. It's not set to anything. It just it's just good. These things rock. Wow. So there it is, everyone. This thing is uh, done. It had really scratchy controls. It had a broken tuner string, and it had a bunch of burnt out light bulbs. And I've just fixed. Uh, all of that. Not on my first try, not perfectly, but uh, I did my best and uh, I think it looks pretty good. I think that uh, the person who this belongs to is going to be very happy with this. Uh, again, I'll just say I do not take on repairs or restorations for viewers. I only do that if they are, you know, a few miles away from me in central Pennsylvania and it's something small because like you saw in my last video, I've got a lot of stuff going on all the time. It's just a hobby. I've got plenty of stuff to restore of my own, and uh, you know I'm gonna do whatever I do with that stuff. So uh, this is an exception. This guy, I met him when I was uh, when I first moved to this area. I was having trouble finding a job in 2020, so I posted a classified, and he is the single person, the one person that replied to my Craigslist ad. So. He's a return customer. Obviously, he's happy with uh, my first repair and his first piece. So, uh, so yeah, thanks for understanding that I am not doing repairs for viewers. So, that is it. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or uh, comments, leave them in the comments. I'll see you in the next one.